There's a place in the woods called Aspen Ridge. This is where we call home. We are the Popple People. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for stopping by. In this episode, we'll be attempting to repair the burst hydraulic hose on our 1959 John Deere 440 crawler. And we're doing this out in the bush at our saw shack build site in the woods. So in our previous video, we thought it was the hydraulic hose for the bucket that had burst. And it turns out it was actually for the boom. In order to replace that hose, the entire cylinder needs to be removed in order to access that area. So the mobile mechanic packed up some tools in the quad and out into the woods we went. So first up, we had to remove the retainer bolt for the hydraulic cylinder pin. And we have to remove the whole hydraulic cylinder in order to get that damaged hose off because it screws into it. So you can see the cylinder pin here and that needed to be tapped out. Next, the other side of the hydraulic cylinder was disconnected from the bucket linkage. Then these hydraulic hoses were disconnected under the hydraulic control unit. Everything was capped off, just trying to prevent leaks as much as possible and to keep dirt out of the lines since we're doing this repair out in the bush. That cylinder's pretty heavy, and it actually needed to be levered out from the back side. With a little bit of coaxing, that cylinder finally popped out. Oh, there's the hose that burst. So even though only one of the hoses burst, we figured we might as well replace both of them since we've got it this disassembled already. So once the hoses were removed, we got a better look at them. And with that damage, we were wondering if maybe this hose was rubbing against something. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. This other hose, the one that was okay, was on there really tight. So the mobile mechanic here had to improvise in the bush to get it loose. There wasn't enough leverage with just one wrench, so he had to cobble on a second one to get enough leverage to get it loose. So we measured and found new hoses. We needed 42 and 60 inch lengths. And the closest location that had both of them in stock was actually a four hour drive away. So we packed up the popple pup and took a quick day trip, stopped to enjoy some of the local scenery on the way.
Looks like the beavers have been pretty busy here. Once we finally returned home, we got to get this old girl button back up. Teflon sealant tape was applied to the threads on the new hoses to prevent leaks. Well, that's an excessively large tool for trying to pull a plug out but you gotta use what you have with you when you're working in the bush. Well, all of that was the easy part. Now it's time to feed everything back through and into place. That cylinder was pretty heavy, but by propping it up on blocks, it was actually maneuvered back into place fairly easily, as you can see here. This metal rod was used to line up the hole for the cylinder pin. And then that pin got hammered back into place. Next, the new hoses were uncapped so the ram could be protracted forward into place. The shorter hose was reattached first, and then the longer hose was reaffixed. So we're all reassembled, but turns out we forgot to bring the hydraulic fluid back into the woods with us. Time to see if this bush repair worked. Fingers crossed. Thank goodness. Great success. Let's get this new road finished. Well, 
one more orientation clip here. So here's the existing trail and there's the little Christmas trees. and the continuation of the existing trail. And as we pan back a little bit, here's the new road. And as we come up over this little hill, we come into the Saw Shack build site and where the crawlers parked, that's the new driveway that we just put in and the Saw Shack will be just to the left up there. So overall, doing this repair wasn't really bad at all, even doing it out in the woods. That was a concern of ours, working in the bush versus in the shop, but it all worked out. We just ended up bringing a lot of things with us, various different size wrenches, a whole bag of random different cap sizes, things like that. So we were prepared, well, at least as prepared as we could be, and working and doing this repair out in the bush actually went pretty smoothly. Well, we are getting really close to finishing up with the excavation work here at the Saw Shack build site. If you want to get a hold of us with questions or comments, please email us at thepopplepeople, all one word, at gmail.com. Or plip plop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll finish leveling the Saw Shack build site and get our area staked out and ready to start construction. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to follow our journey, please consider subscribing. That way, you can be a Popple People too. We'll catch you next time. Bye.